Hey, what's up everybody? I'm here in a 2022 Mercedes Sprinter van. Uh, we just spent the last week installing a power system into this bad boy. Uh, this power system is primarily Victron equipment, but we also have the Nation's secondary alternator kit paired up with a wake speed regulator. So this system, as I'll demonstrate to you, can charge actually four different ways. There's two different alternator charging mechanisms. So one of them is the nation's alternator with the wake speed regulator. We also included an Orion DC to DC charger so that this van can charge both from the secondary alternator and from the primary vehicle factory alternator. In addition to that, if you have shore power, it can charge from the multi plus inverter charger and it will have solar panels on the roof. So let's dive in. I'm just gonna show you what all the blue boxes do. We're gonna take a super quick tour about the system and how we've connected it up and how we're monitoring it and potentially controlling it with Victrom's VRM remote management portal, which is a cloud-based free for life system that you can sign up for if you have any GX device in your system. So the first thing is, we'll take a look at the batteries. So uh, this is always kind of the heart of the system. We've got three of the Victron Smart batteries. These are 200 amp hour capacity each. They've been wired up in parallel. And the, how we've accomplished that is we've taken the three batteries and we're using Victron's Lynx system, which you can see down here below. We, on the left side, we're using a Lynx distributor to allow connecting each of the batteries to our DC bus bar in parallel and to protect this cable or this circuit from the battery with a fuse in each location. Down the road, the customer has the ability to add a fourth battery to this Lynx distributor. We've left enough space up here that if they wanted to add a fourth battery, they could. So this is a 600 amp hour battery bank that could be turned into an 800 amp hour battery bank. Going back down to the Lynx system, these, the batteries that you were just looking at are external BMS batteries, meaning they need a BMS such as this one to manage the batteries to make sure that they uh, are not too hot, that they are not too cold, that they are not over voltage or under voltage. So this device is the Lynx Smart BMS and it actually has a bunch of stuff in it. The first is the BMS. So we have battery cables that connect from the batteries so the batteries can communicate with the BMS. In addition, it's got a shunt on the DC negative side so you can see our batteries are electrically connected to this. As the current passes through, there's a battery monitoring shunt inside this device. The last thing is there's a contactor or a big switch. Everyone's seen the big blue C battery switches. There's a 500 amp version of that built into this that you can actually control through the app, the Victron Connect app, through a remote toggle switch, uh, or, notably, when the batteries need to disconnect from the loads or chargers, the, the internal switch or the internal contactor in this BMS can open. And what that's going to do is electrically disconnect this side of the system from this side of the system. So on the right side here, this is a second Lynx distributor where we have all of our charging sources and all of our loads coming in and out. And in that way, again, if this contactor opens, electrically, this is totally disconnected. So the batteries are protected. And in this side, we have our multi plus inverter charger connected. We have our output from the nation's alternator. We have solar and a DC to DC charger and a connection to the DC load center. Now, what's this thing over here? So if you can see this, it's a little bit dark in that corner, but that's another shunt. We have a shunt for battery monitoring in the Lynx BMS, we have that additional shunt. This is just measuring the current output from the nation's alternator. So later, at when we start this van, we can see how much power is coming from just that alternator, separate from the all other charging sources, such as the DC to DC charger or the solar. So that's what all these boxes are doing. That's the front side of the cabinet. And then up here, kind of adjacent to the batteries, we have that one single Orion DC to DC charger. 
This is connected to the Mercedes van, the Sprinter van's vehicle battery. And when the engine is running, it can detect that because the voltage coming into the unit from the battery goes up. And this will begin charging these house batteries at 30 amps. Now, the Nation's kit, which we'll talk about later, can charge up to 200 amps. Back here, we have uh, the brains of the system, if you will. Uh, this is the Serbo GX, and it's essentially a tiny computer that's designed for mobile power systems. And we have all of these blue boxes, more or less, connected up to the Serbo GX. It's receiving those signals. Uh, it's recording them internally. And later, when we show you VRM, which is the online portal, all of the data that's coming into the Serbo GX from this system is being pushed up into the cloud and can be accessed remotely from anywhere in the world that you have internet access. Of course, that requires this device to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. So here, we have that at our workshop, but in a camper van scenario, you might have a hotspot or a Starlink or something that can keep this persistently connected to the internet, in which case, all the data you have can be pushed up, and you'll also see that you can remotely control the system uh, as well as monitoring using the Serbo GX. So very important piece of gear. Now the Serbo GX pairs up with a touchscreen. The touchscreen in this particular van has been placed up just behind the cab. So this is the Touch 70 screen, and this is the interface that we see and that we interact with for that Serbo GX. So this is the 7-inch version, the Touch 70, and it also comes in a 5-inch version, which is the Touch 50. Um, and basically what you see is a visualization of the entire power system. Right now we don't have shore power connected. The inverter is on external control. It's, uh, it looks like we have about 100 watts of loads on the AC side. The battery state of charge is at 92%, and we're using about 10 amps uh, to run these lights that we're shooting the video with. Um, and we have no PV, so no solar coming in. There's a couple of different screens. They look very similar. They show you a lot of the same information. Um, and then there's this other thing that this is called the boat and motor home overview screen. Uh, again, a lot of the same information, but you can also monitor, let's say, water tanks, fresh or gray or black water tanks. Uh, we sell a kit that allows you to add that easily to your Serbo GX. Um, we can control our inverter charger here through the different modes. We can set the AC current limit, which means that if we're connected, let's say, to a 15 amp shore power inlet, we can set that to 15 amps. If we're at a campground and we have, you know, more power, like a 30 amp connection, we can increase that uh, up or down. And then there's a lot of options in the menu. And one of the things we have is this inside Ruby tag. So a Ruby tag is a Bluetooth sensor that gives you temperature, humidity, air pressure, and uh, motion sensing. So we can look at a bunch of different things on the servo screen, and uh, it's a really great interface. Uh, all of this information, like I mentioned before, you will be able to see in VRM in a few minutes when we take a look at that system as well. So let's go back to the power box. Just talking about the Ruby tag, that's what this thing looks like. So Ruby tags are very small, super easy to deploy because they're wireless Bluetooth. They talk directly to the Servo GX. Um, through Bluetooth. We've added a little Bluetooth uh, to USB dongle here. Um, and that's this entire side of the cabinet. Um, if we move rearward, rear, if we move rear, wood, if we move rear, ward, ward rearward, uh, anyway, if we move toward the back of the van, you can see some more boxes. Um, Notably, uh, here is a MultiPlus 12 3000 120 inverter charger. Uh, what that means is it's a 12-volt unit uh, 
uh, basically 3,000 watts, although it's rated for 2,400 watts continuous. We see these things surging well above 3,000 watts whenever they need to. So that's the 12, 3,000. That last number, 120, that's the charging capability. So this unit can charge up to 120 amps into your battery bank. Uh, the next box, the last blue box in the system, is a uh, solar charge controller. It's an MPPT type controller. Um, this one is a 130. Um, that means that it's capable of up to 100 volts on the input side. So uh, a lot of times solar panels are rated for about 20, 20 volts if they're in a sunny spot. And then if you put them in series, that number starts to grow. Uh, you start to, it's additive. So um, you can, if you have a series string of solar panels, that voltage, the input voltage can be up to 100 volts. The second number, the 30, is the output current. So we can support up to 100 volts at 30 amps of output. This box here is a solar disconnect. So the uh, panels on the roof, they're wired through this disconnect um, so that we can switch off both the positive and negative uh, if we need to work on the system since anytime a solar panel has light, uh, it is electrically live. So this is a safety feature. Uh, the next thing is the wake speed. So uh, that secondary alternator that's now bolted onto this Sprinter engine is controlled by this advanced charging regulator. Uh, so this is in a very important box um, that pairs up with the alternator to basically convert that alternator, that high current alternator, uh, into a advanced charging source. So just to review, this system has a dedicated alternator with a wake speed regulator. You're gonna see in a sprinter like this, about 140 to 200 amps of charging current at 12 volts, uh, depending on if you're at idling or whether you're driving your RPMs. It's going to have a number of solar panels that are going to charge during daylight hours in good conditions through this MPPT solar charge controller. Whenever the customer has utility power or shore power, this device can charge the batteries at 120 amps. And then almost as a backup or a bonus, we're also using the van's factory alternator to charge using this DC to DC charger, which is connected to the Sprinter van battery. Uh, so on the back of the power box, which is what you're looking at now, um, we have a 30 amp shore power breaker. Um, if we were to turn this on, the shore power connection we have would flow into that multi-plus inverter charger and start charging the batteries. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can see that we're now passing that 120 volt AC into the multi plus. And when we do so, you probably just heard that click. When we do so, all the loads, or basically anything that's plugged into the multi plus, anything that's plugged into these outlets, will be powered directly from the shore power. If we disconnect this, the inverter will start creating that power immediately from the batteries instantaneously like a UPS. Um, so that's what this is. This is a shore power breaker. We have an outlet here, pretty basic. Um, this toggle switch allows us to remotely turn off the contactor or that gigantic battery switch that's built into our Lynx Smart BMS. So if I were to switch this off, the entire system would go uh, dark. It would uh, electrically disconnect. Uh, just the same way as turning a big battery switch would. Um, so I can power the system down here. I can log on to the Victron Connect app and through Bluetooth uh, power the system down or when the batteries need to uh, because they're in a condition that shouldn't be charged or discharged, they can also trigger a disconnect. 
Um, this toggle switch is for the wake speed regulator. So if at any point you want to disable the nation's alternator that is controlled by the wake speed, you can simply turn off this switch. Uh, not a lot of good reason to do that, but it's nice to have the option. And then uh, the output of the inverter, so uh, the 120 volt AC output that is coming from our inverter, whether that's coming from shore power or whether that's coming from the batteries and inverted power, go through this 50 amp breaker. And then there's a distribution system for both the AC and the DC up at the front of the van next to the touchscreen. Okay, so this panel, again, is just behind the driver's seat in the Sprinter. This was installed by the customer and all we did was we hooked up uh, a DC power connection to this. So this is a 12 volt DC distribution panel using circuit breakers, uh, which he's labeled very nicely. And then this is the AC, 120 volt AC distribution center with three different circuits. So there are three different circuits that power the AC in this van. This is downstream from that 50 amp breaker that we just took a look at. So the inverter powers the entire system through a 15 amp main breaker, and then these are 15 amp circuits throughout the van. So now let's talk about VRM for a second. VRM is Victron's free online portal. Uh, it's gonna take all the information from a GX device, uh, most popular GX device being the Serbo GX, and it's going to uh, upload it to VRM and it's gonna give you a quick overview of everything that's going on. So right now, uh, we can see that the van is charging because we have our shore power now connected. We're at 92.7 state of charge. We have our input current set to 15 amps. That Ruby tag says it's 80 degrees in here and it's about 58% humidity. So there's lots of information that you can see on this overview screen. If you wanna dive even deeper, you can click on this advanced tab and you'll pull up a variety of charts. Uh, the charts are synchronized. So as you move through one data point in one chart, you'll see a time synchronized view in the other charts. Uh, these are called widgets um, and they're highly configurable. I won't get into too much detail, but basically uh, you can nerd out just about as far as you want to with all this information. Uh, great, for great for troubleshooting as well. Um, if you look at historical data and you see something change very uh, dramatically, that's usually some kind of a red flag around a system problem. Uh, this system was just commissioned a few hours ago, so we have very little data. Um, but on a more mature system, um, this kind of like historical stuff is uh, very useful. Uh, another neat feature of VRM is, you know, if you want to, you can click on Remote Console. This has to be set up on your servo, um, but one that is, once it is set up, you can click on Remote Console, and it's going to bring up um, exactly the same screen that you would interact with uh, through the Servo GX, only remotely. So if we log in here with our PIN, or our password, um, you can see this looks an awful lot like, in fact, identical to what you're gonna see on the screen. So I'm actually using my computer to change the screen or what they call the page on the Servo GX. So watch as I swipe here, you can see that reflected on the screen. I'll swipe again. Um, and so that's very cool, uh, super helpful uh, in a lot of conditions. Um, other things that can be added to the Servo GX, um, obviously all the Victron equipment, stuff like Ruby tags for temperature monitoring, uh, things like tank monitors, which we've talked about. You can add GPS to your Servo GX so that you can geofence your van so it can tell you things like your van has moved to a location that you don't think it should be in uh, and so forth. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is turn off our shore power charging by simply turning this breaker off. That's gonna electrically disconnect the AC input to the MultiPlus, so it's gonna stop charging. 
And what I want to do is demonstrate the charging capability of this nation's alternator. So here we are looking at VRM. And right now we're actually discharging at about 128 watts. And if I bring up the remote console, which is what you're probably going to be used to seeing in a van, because you're going to be interacting with it on a regular basis in your van. And we go to the pages, which are the different screens. So right now we see the battery's at 94% state of charge. It's discharging at about 124, 25 watts which is translates to about 9.3 amps at our current voltage. So we're discharging because we're powering our lights. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is when I turn on the van, we're going to be going from like consuming, let's say nine amps, which is what this means when you see a negative number to a positive number that is much higher um, because having a dedicated secondary alternator is kind of like having a generator that just is running off of your engine. So I shall demonstrate. Stand by while we turn on the Sprinter. The alternator is running. Let's take a look at the wake speed regulator. First thing you're going to see is it's going to flash a green light. OK, it's awake. It's on. When it's connected to an external regulator or an external control, it's going to go into this orange mode. That means it's actually being, uh, it's communicating with our BMS. And now that it's flashing rapidly orange, that means it's going to start charging. And you might even hear that sound from the engine as the alternator revs up. But let's go have a look at the screen and wow we went from like negative 10 to about 167 amps and this is actually um, going to be a combination of the nation's alternator and the dc to dc charger so right now we're idling, we're not even driving, low RPMs. We're pushing in over 2,000 watts or 165 amps. So now let's go into Victron Connect and I'll show you how you can, if this customer wanted to, they could temporarily or permanently disable the DC to DC charger and we'll see the impact of that. Okay, um, so this is Victron Connect. Um, any Victron uh, product that has the word smart in its name uh, means that it has a Bluetooth connection on it. And you can use this app, uh, Victron Connect, to connect to one or hundreds of different Victron items. In this case, we're looking for the DC to DC charger. Um, normally, you're asked for a PIN or a password to log in the first time. Um, but we've already done that. So we can see that right now it's doing a bulk charge. Um, I'm going to go in actually and disable the charger just to see the impact that's going to have on the charging system and the charging current if we're only charging from the nation's alternator. So I'm going to turn that off. We can come back in and look at that later. So if we jump over to our Servo GX touch screen, we can see that this Sprinter van is outputting basically 126 amps uh, or right around 1700 watts at idle. Now let's turn on that DC to DC charger again. And what you're going to see is it uh, the output, the charging output's going to go up a little bit. by about 30 amps, as, as expected. So let's turn it off again, and let's do another little experiment where we're only charging from the nation's alternator with the wake speed. Okay, we can see the current go down again. 
Now this time, let's idle up this sprinter. Let's get those horses out. And you're gonna have to read off of what you see. All right. Oh yeah. Right, so at about 2,000 RPMs, we're seeing about 170 amps. Um, and of course, if we had added in that DC to DC charger, that would have been additive, you know, by about another 30 amps, right around 200. So there's a lot of variables here, but the long and short of it is, you get a tremendous amount of charging capability uh, with that secondary alternator and you can juice it up even a little bit more if you take a little bit of current from the vehicle alternator in the form of a DC to DC charger. So what that allows us to do is run things like air conditioner overnight, maybe for a few nights, off a big but not ridiculous battery bank, right? So we don't need to have 800, 1,000 amp hours Instead, we need a solid day or two of, of storage capability in our batteries and then a really reliable way to recharge them. So uh, what we see a lot of people doing sometimes is just adding more and more and more batteries and they have an enormous battery bank. But what's equally as important is finding ways to recharge those batteries reliably. Okay, folks, that wraps up this tour. Uh, hopefully seeing all of these boxes working together, looking at the different charging sources uh, helps you understand the power system a little bit better, what it looks like kind of in the real world when it's all running. Uh, and yeah, if you want to take a deeper dive, we have a very extensive blog post on this particular system. Uh, just check out our blog at vanlifeoutfitters.com. Look for the post about Victron equipment with a secondary alternator. Uh, that post has a really detailed example wiring diagram that shows all the intricate connections that we've made here. And be sure to check out all the other blog posts that we have that cover everything from like tips for living in a camper van to designing a van to other power systems. Lots of great stuff for free at vanlifeoutfitters.com.